but the focus, uh, as it has been for a number of years with your fine organization, is leadership. And how do you build a high performance team? How can you take it to the next level? I think that's the subject, I see heads nodding already, okay? I think that's the subject you folks have a keen interest in. And I don't know about you, but I'm not particularly happy with what I see in the state of leadership in the world today. Not long ago, we had the Gulf oil spill. BP, British Petroleum, going beyond petroleum. And they had all this stuff about sustainability, but you know what, it was a PR program. Because what was happening on the oil rigs wasn't the same. What's going on with leadership today? I want to talk to you today about something audacious. Putting man on the moon was audacious. People couldn't believe it could be done. As a matter of fact, some of the things I'm going to talk about you might think are impossible. But I'm going to suggest that with a little creativity, a <laughs> little help from your friends, nothing really is impossible. I'm going to talk about changing your view of leadership. I remember early in my career, we had to borrow sales from quarter two to make quarter one. So we told the sales force, go out there, let's make a deal, got to make our numbers, right? Somebody said, you going to make your numbers, Bob? Bob, you going to make your numbers? You bet. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> you bet. You know, so we borrowed sales from quarter two. Whew, made our numbers. What happens at the end of quarter two? I got to borrow from three. Do I have to borrow the same amount from three? More. We are on an unsustainable treadmill. The excellent ethical and enduring companies are going to say, we're not going to borrow sales from quarter two to make quarter one. And if we don't make it, it's because we're doing the right thing. And shareholders understand that. And if you understand that we're building value for the long term to be excellent, ethical, and enduring, you're going to say it's okay to miss your quarter because we didn't do the wrong thing. So why, you might say, um, did we choose horse racing as the title for our book? Excellent, ethical, enduring. There's a set of races in the United States uh, for the Triple Crown Trophy. The Kentucky Derby, which was run several weeks ago, the Preakness, which was run last weekend, followed by the Belmont Stakes. It's very difficult 
three different races within five weeks at distances from a mile and a quarter to a mile and a half on different track surfaces. And since 1875, only 11 horses have won the Triple Crown. It's very challenging. But for us, it's being excellent and ethical and enduring. And as we thought about this title and looked into horse racing, we discovered many great metaphors, many great stories that would illustrate this. So that's why we chose horse racing. This is a shot of the Preakness winner last Saturday. I'll have another, not an adult beverage. He loves cookies. I'll have another, beating the favorite Bodemeister. Triple crown leadership is a group performance. Biggest lesson learned after B school, it's not about the leader, it's a group performance. And we'll talk about some of the details of that, but it's an ebb and flow like improvisational jazz, even within the hierarchy. Some people say the hierarchy is going away. Lattice, network, social, you know, self-managing teams. I don't believe that. There will always be some kind of hierarchy, strong or weak. But within that hierarchy, there is a group performance. Tony Shea, CEO of Zappos, we interviewed him, started Zappos a little over 10 years ago. And his, um, his plan was to shell, sell shoes online. Does that seem like a good idea? You can't try them on, color, you know, I don't know who these guys are. Oh, we're going to have fabulous customer service. Wow, customer service. We're going to be weird. This is a screenshot of Zappos' office in Las Vegas. Somebody does something, hey, do the, do the limbo, you know, 7 o'clock, let's go have margaritas. The hired people, one of the interview questions is, how weird are you? One of the interview questions is, have you ever broke the rules on your own, and why, and what were the results? They want to hear that kind of stuff, because they're going to give wow customer service. We don't talk enough to each other about our character, about characteristics that we admire in each other. So I'd like to take a little break from me talking and, and have you pair up with somebody that you know pretty well. I want you to think a little bit, stand up, and look at each other okay. in the eye, and I want each of you to tell something about the other person that you admire. Don't deflect the compliment. Speak from your heart to your colleague about something in their character that you admire, because we don't hear that enough. Okay?